The last dolphin that Alberto got. Gabs in middle. What is shaking everyone? It is, it is an important day because we get to keep the very elusive, very endangered red snapper today. And we have a celebrity guest on the boat, <laughs> Alberto. Came all the way from the jetty. He actually fell off the jetty. We picked him up on our way out. And we got Mark and Robin over there. And a red snapper coming up. So many red snappers. We're gonna be a little picky though. I'm dropping a big bait down to the bottom and we're gonna see how fast it happens. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Don't Turn be, the handle. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. This is what we've been looking for, Alberto. Now You're we up got, next. Now we got the right size. Yeah, now we got the right size. Yeah, this is a better one. This is one. what we want. I just want to be double digits. That's it. That's it. Over 10 pounds, I'm happy. Over for 10 the day. pounds. Ooh. We can let the babies go. Yep. So, as you guys can see, <laughs> There's no shortage of red snapper. No shortage. Maybe there'll be a someone high up on Noah watching. But for the first time in a year, we've actually been able to keep some of these. Whoa! Going under. Just gotta keep them away from the motors. Red snapper. Got top shot. Off the a bit over nah, there? I just had it right on the bottom. There he is. Yeah, it's a floater. It's a floater. Oh, All right, it's a tangle. It's a tangle. Nice one, Joey. All right. Just hold your rod tip up, Roberto. Okay. That's a good one right there. That's a good one. Better. That's better, Joey. That's a better one. That's a better one. That's what we're looking for. We need four like that. We will. We'll get four like that. There we go. That's a beauty. See, Joey? That Hi, is the red snapper That's the one that we, we wanted. Is that like 12? Nice juicy one. Yeah, yeah but probably 12, 14. 12 pound or something like that. Good job, Joey. All right, I'm done with the big rod. Finally, we get to keep some. Time to get goofy with it. We got this tsunami squid jig. Squid jig? Is that what this is called? No. Silicone skirt jig, that's what it is. Get some sun on it. Silicone skirt jig. Because these arses are coming way off the bottom. Erdo's getting a new bait. We've got a couple on the boat now, but we're looking for bigger ones. So we're gonna save the last spot or the last two fish for some nice chunky ones. Time to send the jig down. I don't think there's any bigger than what I have. No, no, don't even lift up and reel down. Just keep turning. Don't we'll deal with that one. I got a big red on that one. All right. We're don't gonna, let it go any, don't get bring it any faster, jig. though. No, I'll just It'll pull the hook. Come on, Alberto. Not as big as what I thought. We'll see. That one come off? I don't know. Oh, he's pulling. Oh, we got him on the jig. Oh, came off the jig. Oh. My driver's that one was came off, honey. Hooked up on the jig. You can go faster. You can you can go get up a little quicker. Oh no! We, oh no! Come on, on, buddy. Big red right here. Yeah. Got him on the jig. Got him on Birdo. Ooh. I can't believe Birdo's on the boat. Birdo's on the boat. Hey, honey. Get off. Anything? Okay. Oh come on. All right. Yeah. Now we're using that six thousand salt X with that Blue Water Series carbon shield. And Birdo's got him on the bottom rock. Birdo's got him on the bottom rock. Birdo, you want me? I mean, uh, Joe, you want me to put this in the cooler? Um, no, nah, that's all right. I'll get him in a sec. Okay. Oh, he's gone. He fell off, Birdo. Right, you lost Birdo. him. 
Oh, that came off. No, it's a good no, one. It didn't come off. Here, oh, pull that. I was just kidding. Oh, I thought you said it came off. <laughs> yeah, I did. I was just kidding. Oh, it's a nice one. It's a nice one, Alberto. Oh. Alberto, is that your biggest there red you snapper? Go. There you That's go. Alberto's biggest red there snapper. You go. Yay. Alberto. <laughs> I woke up. Biggest... Take, that, take that, take that, chicken. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You got to get a picture with that one. Come on, I am sweating. Turning this one loose? No, that's, no, a, that's, a, keeper. that's a keeper, Alberto. I gotta eat something. Oh, you might have. I think I got an AJ. I have a nice AJ. That'd be one of my head bait. No, I was throwing a J. Honey, grab oh, me that gaff just in case. Yeah, it looks long. It looks jack like. I think it's an AJ. I know what Alberto's doing next. It's an AJ. Alberto, he's, he's no. got an AJ fish. Nice AJ. No. <laughs> I'm already tired. Nice On a spinning rod. Yeah. Already tired. Should we go right, Joey? Yeah, definitely. No doubt about it. Oh, yeah. Yep. Wait, watch that little jig. It's yeah, barely in there. Get him wherever you can, honey. Yeah, I don't get it. Woo! Get him wherever you can. Good job, Joey. Oh, the oh, jig came out. out. Oh! Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> jig came out right there. That's why you gotta hook him wherever you can, honey. Yeah. Right, nice I'd like to catch reef you. donkey. Oh. All right. Do it again. Do it again. There we go. We got something very rare and endangered in this photo, and it is not that red snapper. It is Alberto on a boat offshore. That reef donkey put up a good fight on that jig. We might have to get another one of them. <laughs> All right. The last dolphin that Alberto got was on the jetty in 1914. They used to make the run. It was the summer blitz of 62. 16, I mean. But that's a nice one, Birdo. Nice Good pictures. What a mixed bag. That nice bull, a couple mangroves, arse, cobra, and a couple AJs. And a sea bass is down there somewhere. So that was a fun day on the water. We had the fishing, we had the diving, and now we're going to clean. I'm going to show you cleaning one of the red snapper on my brand new, or with my brand new knife, a sword knife. They make a bunch of different knives. And there's something coming out that's pretty cool that I'm excited for, but that'll be for another video. So first off, out of the box, we'll say it has a really nice sheath. It's a hard sheath, not the really flimsy one. And the first thing I noticed when I used this knife was how it actually feels in your hand. It's solid. It's not super crazy light. It has like a nice weight to the handle, very well balanced. And it's almost like a cross hatching on the handle where it's got a really, really good grip. And this is the flexi blade, nine inch flex blade. So that's what we're about to start slicing with. That is not the one you caught, that's the one I caught. That's a lot of work. We're, gonna gonna say, we're just gonna say to crank one of those in. So as we get started on this snapper, I'm gonna kind of go over what I'm doing here and then for the rest of the video, there's gonna be some, some voiceover as well. So first off, I'll say this sword knife uh, is awesome. First fish I filleted with it and it should be awesome. You see how fast and clean I was able to cut right down the backbone, making that real shallow cut that I'm gonna use to follow as I continue to go deeper and deeper down the backbone of the fish until you get to the spine. Then I get the tip of the knife right over the spine, about a third of the way from the tail until I can cut all the way through. And now I got that back part free from the spine. I lift up on that and kind of work my way forward. And then there's two different ways you can do it here. One, like I'm doing now, making that cut down through the ribs, connecting with my first cut and rolling the knife to pop the ribs. The other way is filleting over the ribs. This way is faster for me. I cut the ribs out. I give the ribs and the throat to a buddy of mine, so it's kind of nice. He get, gets the ribs with a lot of meat on it when you do it this way, and it's faster, which at the end of the day is a huge plus uh, for me. Now, did the same thing on the other side. There's the carcass. We're going to put that in the pile. That's going to go back into a cooler. And now we're getting into the mangrove madness, we'll call it. It was absolutely insane. These spawning mangroves were so solid, some of the biggest schools I've ever seen. And every single fish I shot, if I didn't roll it, I had sharks coming up to me. This fish, I had a bad shot on. I shot it high. I didn't want to rip it and rip it up real hard and pull it off. So I kind of played it out a little bit and I ended up getting it. You'll see that fish later on. Now, the free diving is my, one of my favorite things to do. And this kind of shows you why these fish school up like this. I could not pick one out. The schooling fish did exactly what they were supposed to do. That's confused the predator, and they definitely did. They busted me there. I couldn't pick one out to aim at. So I regrouped, dove back down, drifted into them again. And I mean, these mangroves are big. These are all 
eight to 12 pound mangroves, I would say, for, for most of them in the school. Now, this one, this one just gave me a really easy shot. I hit him really good, just missed the stone shot by a little bit. And sure enough, the big old mean bull sharks were still hanging around and they came up like they did on every single one I shot, except one. Again, really solid shot. I pulled them in quickly, and then just for a split second, you could see one of the sharks down there, but no big deal. We got him. Once I'm holding onto the fish, it's usually pretty safe. Now, it's the same school again. They were not spooking. They did not care. They're in full spawn mode. They do not care that I'm there at all. And I did the same thing, kind of drifted down, picked out a little bit of a chunkier one. And this one, again, I hit it really good. It went into a spiral, though. I didn't stone it. And this one, the sharks came up really fired up on for whatever reason. I don't know why. He flew straight past the fish, came to me, and luckily turned away at the last second. There's two or three bull sharks again right there, and that's just what you can see. They're always around. Pretty much every spot I fish, every spot I dive, it's loaded with bull sharks and sandbars. Some days they're worse than others. Now again, we're drifting back down, coasting really, really slow, drifting into the school, and you can see the mangroves. They actually come towards me. And this is one of my favorite clips because I did what I actually been trying to do the whole time. I picked out a real nice chunky one, lined up the shot with my... Koa uh, 130 Euro, which is actually way too big of a gun to be doing what I'm doing. But I rolled him. Finally rolled one. Never saw a shark on this dive. It's just the fish didn't put out the distress that it normally does if you shoot it and don't kill it right away. Again, back on some big mangroves. This is another different school. And again, these clips are from several different days. This isn't all just one day. But picked out a nice one. Took a, a going away from me shot, which are usually not my favorite. And I hit him pretty good, but again, he was gonna get the sharks fired up, of course. So as I'm pulling him up, I'm getting to the surface so I can breathe, and this shark came flying up high. And you'll hear what I had to say about that. Fuck this. Holy shit. Ah! Here we go. That is like a... 25 pound snapper curl with fingers. Oh. All right. All right, all right. We are bouncing to another spot now. And I like to say, when I find the life, you find the life. I mean, I don't care if it's bait fish, snappers, uh, blue runners, or spade fish in this case, whatever it is, I like finding life because life means more life. And I'm in Spade NATO right here, drifting down, eyeing up a couple Kuberas that I'm just really trying to get close enough to. And luckily, this, this is why I shoot the big gun. Uh, it's not for those little mangroves, it's for stuff like this. Bigger fish, further, longer shots, really hard scales. I got just close enough to that Kubera to let it fly. And that's the bottom down there, if you can see those shadows, and it's about 110 foot there. If I don't stop this fish, I don't have a good chance of getting the spear out of the rock. So I'm holding as hard as I can, kicking as hard as I can. I'm just not going anywhere. So I was able to stall him out for a little while. I inched him some line as I made it to the surface, and I was rewarded with this beautiful fish. Cabrera. Cabrera, yeah. Wow, that's like the biggest Cabrera I think I've ever seen. Where's the rod hole? There it is. Look at that guy. Back up, Robin. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Wow, what a big Cabrera, Joey. Wow. That is a chunky one. And when I was grabbing him, there was something sharp in his gill. I don't know what it was. I don't know if the slip tip made it all the way up there, if there's a hook in there or what. But again, I used that slip tip, had a, another awesome meat shot, and it didn't come out. Flopper shaft, good shot. You would have not landed that fish. That's awesome. Junkie Kubera. That's awesome. That's a chunky one right there. That cable slip tip engaged perfectly in the gut cavity. You guys can see it. We're gonna slide it back right out that way, which I'll probably have to put the camera down for.
we go. This dive was at the end of the day and it's a really similar area to where I just shot that Kubera. And I was really just kind of unloading my gun and AJ came up, he gave me a really good shot. I like smoked fish, a lot of my friends like smoked fish. And he gave me the El Rolo shot. I got a perfect shot on him right through the stone spot. And the tail actually kept quivering, but he didn't put up any fight at all. He was donezo, mouth open, ready to be thrown in the boat. 